congestive heart failure, pathophysiology overview. And boy, is it a vicious cycle. Congestive heart failure usually starts from some kind of damage or weakening to the heart muscle, usually caused by clogged arteries due to coronary artery disease or increased afterload. from chronic long-term hypertension. This then, this weakening of the heart, decreases stroke volume. Stroke volume is the amount of blood pumped by the heart with each beat. So if stroke volume goes down, down goes cardiac output, which is the amount of blood that's pumped by the heart in a minute. Now the heart has a couple of compensations it will make to try and increase cardiac output. One of those is to increase heart rate because if you can increase heart rate, you could increase cardiac output. However, all compensations come with a price tag and in this case, the price tag is less time to fill. Another compensation that we'll see by the heart are structural changes. And these are made, these structural changes in the heart muscle are an attempt to increase stroke volume. One common kind of compensation we see in the heart muscle is called dilated cardiomyopathy. In this situation, the wall of the ventricle becomes very thin. The heart is getting bigger. It's trying to pump more blood, but this comes at a cost. It's actually just getting weaker. It's losing its leverage to pump well. And you can see that what's going to happen then is as it pumps even less effectively, stroke volume drops further, perpetuating this vicious cycle of a weakening heart. Another thing that's sometimes seen, a change in the heart muscle during congestive heart failure or leading to it, is a thickening of the ventricle wall. We call this hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. In this situation, the walls are getting thicker, trying to pump more blood, but they're getting stiffer as well. And there's less room for blood, so they don't fill the way a healthy heart should. And you can see in this case, too, that although the ventricle is trying to pump more blood, it's actually not succeeding and we have a progressive drop in stroke volume. Okay, now on to the kidney. The kidney is exquisitely sensitive to drops in cardiac output. As you can see, it gets grumpy when it doesn't get enough blood. Unhappy kidneys that need more blood will release renin. And renin causes the formation of a hormone called angiotensin. Angiotensin stimulates the release of another hormone called aldosterone. And aldosterone causes salt and water retention. So you can see that we're getting some fluid accumulation, right? Now if you put it all together and think, okay, the heart is getting weaker in its compensatory changes while it's trying to increase stroke volume, it's actually losing leverage or not filling well anymore, and you're having this progressive drop in cardiac output.
So the drop in cardiac output continually is stimulating the kidneys to continue releasing renin. And that continued production of renin is going to cause more and more aldosterone to be in the blood. And you can see then that in, um, as congestive heart failure proceeds, you can end up with volume overload. If it's the left side of the heart that failed first, then what will happen is blood will be waiting to enter the left side of the heart. And where is it waiting around? It's waiting around in the lungs. And blood that sits around or loiters gets itself into trouble. And in fact, it starts seeping in to the tissues. Or if it's in the lungs, it can cause pulmonary edema. And that's where we get that word congestion from. There's actually pulmonary congestion, too much fluid in the lungs. If it's the right side of the heart that failed first, or if the left side failed and then the right, starts, right side starts to fail, which is typically what happens. Now in this case, you have blood waiting around in the periphery trying to get back into the right side of the heart. So that's gonna be blood draining from the head, so we might see jugular vein distension or it might be blood that is down in the lower legs and it's seeping out into the tissues. And so now we could have swollen ankles. Uh, as the disease progresses, there might even be fluid accumulation occurring in the abdomen, we call that ascites, or in the liver, and that would be liver congestion. So a general name for that though is peripheral edema, where we would see the swollen ankles, etc. Okay, so now that you have an idea of uh, what's going on with the comp compensations that ultimately cause a weaker and weaker uh, functioning heart and a continual decrease in cardiac output, then you can see um, how congestive heart failure truly is a vicious cycle. So in our next video, we'll talk about some treatments for congestive heart failure, and I'll particularly try to tie together how the treatments get at what is going on uh, specifically in this renin angiotensin aldosterone system, and a little bit on the heart, how um, certain medications can be used to ease the workload on the heart.